I'm Ina Fried with CNET News here in San Francisco, where Microsoft Today showed some new search improvements, particularly on the mapping side. I'm here with Blaise Aguera Yarkas, who's one of the architects of MSN and Bing Maps. And uh, I was hoping you could kind of explain a little bit about what you guys added today and then also show us. Sure, happy to. So uh, what we've done with, with Bing Maps is we've released a new Silverlight-powered site that is uh, much richer than the Ajax-powered site and is really designed to both highlight a bunch of the new types of imagery that, uh, that we've been collecting and also provide a, an ecosystem or a canvas on which you can do all sorts of new things uh, beyond just uh, driving directions and search. So uh, if I, I've got, I've got uh, San Francisco on the screen now, and uh, so this is Silverlight powered, so even, even just the regular sort of zooming and panning, you'll notice is just a lot more fluid than, um, than it is with, uh, uh, with an Ajax site. And as we zoom in, we're, we're in auto mode right now, which means that, which means that the, um, the map style will change dynamically as I, as I zoom. So um, it's changed dynamically now to um, what we've been calling enhanced bird's eye, which is uh, this uh, synthetic 45 degree view of, uh, of cities uh, based on 3D models and uh, oblique imagery. So this isn't one image, but rather a composite of lots of images that you guys have. Exactly. We've taken lots of images and, and, uh, and uh, draped them and combined them over 3D models, and you get this kind of SimCity-like view. Um, and there, there are four of them. So this is, this is looking obliquely uh, facing north, and uh, you can make these continuous transitions to you know, looking west, looking south, looking east. So, um, so this is this is uh, uh, this is this uh, synthetic uh, enhanced bird's eye. If we if we zoom in closer, um, notice that there was another transition that we just saw. And what we've just done is we've now we've now transitioned to um, the original bird's eye image. So we wanted to make sure that we provided a way to get uh, all the way down to the source imagery. Uh, you know, so you get the maximum possible resolution. There's no degradation. Uh, notice there's 3D information sort of behind this. You can see how roads turn dotted as they go behind buildings. That's because we do know a lot of 3D information uh, about, the under, about what's actually on the ground uh, under these images, but you're looking at a real, at a real image. So as I, as I move from one image to the next, if you watch closely, you'll see, you'll see how we, um, we do this kind of photosynth-like morph from one image to another, because this is now not the SimCity view, right? This is just original bird's eye images, and so um, each of them is taken from a slightly different perspective. And we, we have those, of course, also north, west, east, south. And then one of the coolest things happens when you zoom in even further. Uh, right, so. right. So, um, so if we if we keep going, uh, we we have uh, we have this uh, we have this capture. So let me let me uh, move to some place um, cool. So um, I don't know, like the city hall is city hall is fun. Um, so we're now we're now in this kind of uh, synthetic bird's eye view around City Hall. If I uh, click on the little blue guy, then we get casings around roads that we've driven. Uh, and uh, if I if I click, then I get this transition down into human scale. Uh, so this is uh, this is street side imagery. And, and so um, for those who don't know, this is basically what you would see if you were walking or driving right in front of City Hall. Exactly. This this imagery is captured with a camera mounted on top of a car. Uh, so notice that it's it's not. I mean, we're looking right now at a, at a panoramic image, but it's not just a panoramic image. There's a lot of 3D knowledge behind this. So if I uh, if I click on the ground just ahead of us, then you'll see this transition as I move down the street that really uses all that 3D knowledge of the of the street as we go. So um, you know, or I can or I can do things like um, clicking on a facade. So you know, like if I if I hover over here, you see how you can you can see where the facade is, clicking on it brings me right to that point of view and transitions to that, to that panoramic image looking in that direction. So, uh, so that's, that's uh, sort of um, three levels of imagery, human scale, um, this, um, uh, this synthetic uh, oblique imagery, um, and, uh, the, uh, and the original oblique bird's eye images. Uh, the other source of imagery that's really, that's really cool that we've, that we've uh, integrated in this release is um, uh, photosynths. So uh, we, we, don't, we don't think that we can get everything of interest in the world by flying planes and you know, driving cars down the roads, right? So it's really interesting to us to think about how you crowdsource that imagery as well. That was part of the vision of Photosynth when we launched it in, in August of last year. And so Photosynth, for those who don't know, is a product that lets someone create a, um, 
virtual 3D image from tons and tons of still 2D pictures that they might take with their camera or even cell phone. Exactly. And so now you guys are using those photosynths and integrating them with the mapping product. Exactly, exactly. If you take a photosynth, you can give it a geolocation. And um, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to search for the Met, New York, and um, that'll fly us into the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and it's kind of cool that we get this, we get this entity over there as well. Um, so here's the, the Met in, in, that, in that synthetic uh, bird's eye. If I click on the human scale button, the thing to notice is that not only do I get these uh, blue casings around roads, but I also get these little green bubbles, uh, which represent synths that lots of different users have, uh, have taken uh, in, this, in this environment. So there, there are a bunch of users here. Uh, I, I especially like these synths that Tino2 has taken in the Met. So I can dive right into that synth from the map. And um, so this, this is an especially big synth. It's, it's more than a thousand images. Um, and so he took, those, he took those in the museum, and uh, that's just showing you the orientation of the synth relative to the map. So um, this, is, this is his photos uh, reconstructed in, in, uh, in 3D. Uh, he so now we're inside the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and whereas everything else we'd shown before is imagery that Microsoft has acquired, this is something that an individual user has done of the Greek and Roman art section of the Met. Exactly. Um, and if, if we click on this overhead view, you can, you can really see how just from those images alone, we're able to get this pretty amazing 3D reconstruction of this, of this whole wing of the Met. As I... As I um, as I move around, as I move the mouse around, I can see what, what photos he took in which parts. So like if I, if I click over, over here, say, we'll kind of dive into that model and look at that particular image. We don't think that we can do everything that there is to be done with maps. We, we really see maps not as an application itself, but as a canvas. And even the simple stuff like directions and search are actually implemented under the hood just as apps on this map canvas. So. Uh, so today, what we've released is uh, the, the first steps toward making that ecosystem. Uh, there's already an app gallery in there that's, uh, that's got uh, a dozen or a couple dozen uh, apps that we've developed uh, in-house or with close partners. And um, that, that ecosystem is one that will be uh, opening up over, um, over the next short while. Can you show us what that app gallery looks like and then uh, what some of the apps are that people have built? Of course. So uh, if you click on... Um, if you click on this, this little greater than sign, uh, you get, you get uh, the app gallery of the stuff that we're releasing uh, right away. Uh, so this is, this is an example of, of one that was, was literally written on a weekend by one of our architects. Um, this is um, today's front pages, which uses a feed from, um, from, the, uh, from the museum, which is um, a not-for-profit that archives uh, front pages from newspapers all over. Uh, the world. So this is this is the coverage is not just is not just U.S. And this is really newspapers all over the world. And as I as I hover over one of these, you can see that you get this sort of uh, nice uh, flippy 3D uh, view of, of what those uh, what those newspaper front pages look like. Um, and so you can see what what today's news was all over the world. And of course, you can click through to the original on the on the museum site. Uh, so that's that's an example of of uh, a feed of. Um, uh, a third-party feed surfacing in, in the map. One of the other applications you showed today was uh, an application built with Twitter that sits on top of Bing Maps. What does that allow? And I imagine this builds on the new uh, geotagging feature within Twitter. That's right. So it's, it's cool that we can do this on such short notice given that the geotagging feature is only a couple of weeks old. Um, but uh, that's right. So we collaborated with, uh, with Twitter to, uh, to make uh, a Twitter uh, app in the app gallery. And what that does is it surfaces on the map all of the geolocated tweets in your field of view, and you can explore those. Uh, you can browse images. You can, uh, of course, link back to the original users and all their other posts and so on. And these aren't your friends necessarily. This is abroad. Right. Everyone on Twitter. Right, right. This is everyone. These are all tweets. Uh, many of these are extremely recent. This, this one is uh, 24 minutes ago over here. Um, so this is a... Uh, Digital K van. It's always dangerous to pull up <laughs> to pull up user user generated stuff, of course, when you don't know what you're going to get. But you know you can you can filter. So this is re this is this gives you the ability to refine your results. So let's try something relatively innocent like coffee, and um, and yeah. So we've we've got we've got a bunch of a bunch of coffee tweets just from um, from very recently. And all these different changes that went live on Bing. These are live today. 
That's right. And people basically just need a browser and the Silverlight extension, is that correct? Exactly, which, which works on both PCs and Macs and is designed to be very, very cross-platform, cross-browser. Great, thanks, Blaze. Thank you. For CNET News, I'm Ina Freed. Mm -hmm.